In 1887, a Spanish landowner named Marcelina de Sautula was exploring a cave on his property with his nine-year-old daughter Maria. Sautula planned to excavate the cave until his daughter looked upwards and noticed numerous paintings of bison scattered all across the walls. The paintings were between 36,000 and 10,000 years old and were made for a span of well over 20,000 years in an era known as the Upper Paleolithic, which is when archaic humans began using stone tools. Paleolithic cave paintings, like the Altamira paintings, are surprisingly common throughout the world, and similar paintings can be found from North America to Australia, Europe, and Africa. These enigmatic sites usually contain images of Ice Age animals painted with ochre and charcoal, including wild horses, mammoths, reindeer, and woolly rhinos, although the species depicted vary geographically. These animal paintings are often accompanied with more abstract scribbles, such as zigzags and lattice patterns, and even stranger imagery, including half-animal, half-human creatures known as therianthropes, and paintings depicting humans transforming into animals. These remarkable works of art appear to be the earliest evidence of abstract thinking, creativity, and symbolism in the human species, as well as the first indications of spiritual practices among humans. Despite the fact that they are so common, researchers have had difficulty explaining why our ancestors were so inclined to make the dangerous trip into these caves in order to produce these works of art, and for a while it was presumed that the motivations of our ancestors would never be discovered. After all, how could we ever hope to access the minds of archaic humans? However, the South African archaeologist David Lewis Williams came across several key pieces of evidence which led him to propose a unifying theory to explain the cave art, known as the neuropsychological model. To understand this theory, we will need to look at the insights which led to its development. It turns out that some cave painting societies still exist today. The San of Southern Africa are a Stone Age society with a cave painting tradition which goes back to the prehistoric age, making their culture a direct link into the far past. In fact, genetic analysis has revealed that the San may be the oldest human culture which still exists today. Two German anthropologists managed to collect extensive ethnographic records from the San before their culture was largely transformed into an agricultural society. One of the questions posed by the anthropologists was whether they could explain the purpose of their cave art. The San art is quite similar to cave art which can be found at other sites. There are hundreds of depictions of humans transforming into animals, but there were also unique paintings which appeared to show people and animals bleeding profusely from the nose. The San informants told the anthropologists that the paintings were representative of an important religious ritual in San culture, known as the Trance Dance. The Trance Dance was performed during times of spiritual crisis, and it involved an arduous, repetitive dance which could last up to 24 hours. The Trance Dance eventually causes severe dehydration and profuse bleeding from the nose, and this causes the dancer to have a profound hallucinatory experience similar to being high on psychedelic drugs in what is known as an altered state of consciousness. As one San informant put it, It is a circular dance of men and women, following each other, and it is danced all night. Some fall down, some become mad and sick, blood runs from the noses of others. Altered states can be achieved via a variety of methods, including the consumption of psychoactive drugs, rhythmic dancing, meditation, or through electrical stimulation or hypnosis. The capacity to experience altered states of consciousness is ingrained into our nervous systems. As Lewis Williams explains, the strong evidence that chimpanzees, baboons, monkeys, cats, dogs, and other animals hallucinate suggests that altered states of consciousness and hallucinations are a function of the mammalian, not just the human, nervous system, and that non-real visual percepts were experienced long before the Upper Paleolithic. Once this altered state is achieved, the San believed that the trance dancer had entered the spirit world, and the strange things he or she encountered there are all a part of this supposed spirit world. The San believed that entering the spirit world caused the dancer to transform into different animals, and while in this deep hallucination, they would encounter what they believed were spirits, with whom they could communicate in order to ask for favors or resolve spiritual issues. Once the hallucination ended, the dancer would create a cave painting of his experience in order to solidify it. This explains the drawings of half-human, half-animal figures, and the drawings of people with severe nosebleeds. These rituals were a significant feature of San society, and the Juhuansi culture of neighboring Botswana also performed these trance dances for precisely the same purpose. 
Although these findings are certainly intriguing, it is difficult to conclude that all cave art arose from altered states of consciousness. However, David Lewis Williams stumbled upon additional evidence which supported his hypothesis. A monograph written by the Colombian anthropologist Gerardo Reichel Dolmatov detailed the consumption of the psychedelic brew known as Yahe, also known as Ayahuasca, by the Tucano Indians native to Colombia. Reichel Dolmatov noted that the brew caused the Tucano to see specific geometric patterns, and these same patterns can be found in Tucano artwork. The ayahuasca also caused the Tucano to have visions of various animals, including giant snakes and jaguars. Interestingly, these very patterns can be reliably found throughout cave art. Furthermore, these patterns don't appear to be completely random scribbles, but rather they seem to all relate to a few basic categories. Reichel Dolmatov called these abstract patterns phosphenes, also known as entopic phenomena. Phosphenes are subjective images, independent of an external light source, and are the result of self-illumination of the visual sense. As they originate within the eye and the brain, they are common to all men. Lewis Williams also examined the ethnographic reports of the shamanistic Koso culture, native to California, and found that their art depicted entities which could be viewed after consuming the psychoactive plant Jimson weed. All of these hints clearly pointed to a pattern of altered states of consciousness being involved in shamanistic art, and so David Lewis Williams proposed his neuropsychological theory, which posited that the cave art depicted visions witnessed in altered states of consciousness. Altered states of consciousness, as mentioned previously, can arise via a variety of methods, and the use of psychedelic drugs is one such method. The word psychedelic means soul manifesting or soul revealing, and it refers to the ability of these drugs to reveal our unconscious minds. Normal conscious perception is very restricted in order to preserve energy, as the brain expends a large amount of energy in order to perceive the world. In other words, the brain limits perception in order to increase efficiency. For example, you can actually see your nose in your visual field if you focus intently on it, but your brain normally filters this image out. When under the influence of psychedelic drugs, a large part of our perception which is normally filtered out becomes conscious. Similarly, there are aspects of our perception which are filtered out ordinarily which become apparent in altered states of consciousness. Entopic phenomena are similar because our brains normally block them out. These curious patterns actually originate from the structure of the eye itself, and they are similar but distinct from floaters, which can be seen if you look at a blank surface and move your eyeballs slowly. These patterns can be witnessed in altered states of consciousness by nearly all people, because our eyes are very similar to each other. As Lewis Williams explains, the universality of entopic phenomena encourages us to construct a model of the ways in which our mental imagery is perceived by people in certain altered states of consciousness. The neuropsychological model accounts for the similarities between different rock art paintings as due to the shared neuropsychology of all humans. The animal paintings may also be figures which were first seen in hallucinations, just as the kosu and sand feature animals in their art for this reason. Just as the sand frequently depicted elands in their work, European Ice Age cave artists may have held a spiritual significance for the woolly mammoths, horses, and reindeer which they painted. And so it makes sense that they would be frequently encountered in hallucinations, as these animals would have been the animals which Ice Age hunters were keenly focused on. This form of religion, where certain animals are given spiritual significance, is known as animism, and this is a topic we will return to in a later video. The artists at prehistoric sites may have achieved hallucinatory states via a number of possible methods, including rhythmic dancing or the consumption of psychoactive plants and mushrooms, such as the ubiquitous psilocybin mushroom. It is easy for us modern people to look at these paintings and recognize them as simple depictions, but would the same apply to archaic humans? We can imagine the profound psychological effects of these paintings, as it would help contribute to the development of a theory of mind, as a person may realize that their fellow tribe members could also see hallucinations in altered states of consciousness. A theory of mind is the idea that other individuals have their own subjective experience, and although this is obvious to us, it wouldn't have been very clear to primitive humans. Modern people have no difficulty with abstract thinking and imagination, but this may have been a more difficult task for archaic humans. Just as we are amazed by modern paintings, creating and witnessing these cave paintings may have been an awe-inducing experience for our early ancestors. Altered states of consciousness may have been deliberately produced in order to gain access to these supposed spirit worlds, 
and this hints at the possibility that religion itself originated from hallucinatory states. This form of religion, where the participants enter altered states of consciousness in order to visit these supposed spirit worlds, is known as shamanism, and it is still in practice today. According to the religious historian Mircea Iliad, one of the most common motifs in shamanism is hallucinatory states where a person believes they are transforming into an animal. Maybe the therianthropes depicted in cave paintings were the first gods, who were believed to inhabit the spirit world, and with whom communication could only occur by means of an altered state of consciousness. To modern people, it is clear that these altered states are the result of chemicals, but to our ancestors this would not have been obvious. In future videos we will examine shamanism more closely, and analyze the psychological significance of shamanism and altered states of consciousness.